Hello everyone, my name is Mo Chen and I work as a data and analytics manager and I'm here today to give you five practical tips on how you could actually land your first data analyst job or any analyst job or any job that relies heavily on data analysis. I've been working with complex big data ever since I finished my master's degree and have over six years of experience analyzing data within the financial services industry. I love a straightforward, honest, no BS approach. So let me jump right into tip number one, learn by doing. And let me just say this again, learn by doing, not by watching as in watching other people do data analysis. Please learn by actually implementing the techniques, the code, the syntax, the functions that you learn along the way. Once you actually carry out data analysis tasks on your own and probably make a couple of mistakes during the process, or if you're like me, many, many mistakes alongside breaking things here and there, you'll end up learning whatever tools or techniques way better in my opinion than just watching some videos or tutorials or reading an article because somewhere along the way, you'll have to figure out how to do things yourself. You'll have to think about what tool you should be using. Think about what data analysis techniques you should be using within that tool. Let me take a specific example here and let's use learning Microsoft Excel, for example. You could endlessly watch others use formulas and functions and create pivot tables and pivot charts to analyze data only to not action anything on the back of watching these videos and tutorials or you could watch the videos and tutorials and then grab a random data set, let's say from Kaggle, and then try and carry out the data analysis workflow on your chosen data set. Because the data set is something that's new to you, a data set that you must explore before you can even begin to interrogate and analyze your data, you'll be forced to apply everything you've learned rather than just an aimless copy and paste exercise. Or if you think finding a random data set and attempting data analysis this way might just be a step too advanced for you, then you could also find some guided projects. I have my own version in the form of my ultimate Excel projects where I guide you through the entire data analysis life cycle. So you'll learn to clean data, model data, analyze data, do some financial modeling, create efficient dashboards and reports, and even do some project management and actually apply these skills so that by the end of your learning, you can be confident that you can apply all the skills you've learned. You can find all the information about my guided projects on my website at mochan.info, where you can also join my community to get exclusive data analysis content focused on advancing your career. Trust me, learning by doing is definitely the way to learn. Active learning beats passive learning any day of the week. I've experienced benefits of this many, many times, and it is still by far the most efficient way for me to learn. Another thing you can do right now, or at least get started with, is to get qualified to be credible. Of course, one of the best ways to be credible is to have relevant job experience or a relevant degree. Any math, computer science, or data analytics related degree is obviously a great one to have. But what if you don't have any relevant job experiences or a relevant degree? What's your next best option? Well, in my opinion, your next best option would be to get some kind of a certification. And I know that there are so many courses and certifications out there. But if you're after one that is approved and recognized by industry experts, then look no further than the Data Analyst Certification by DataCamp. It's built with industry leaders based on the latest market demands. And DataCamp, of course, also provides the necessary preparation in the form of various career tracks and courses. The Associate Data Analyst in SQL teaches you everything from writing basic SQL queries, through writing functions to explore and manipulate data, to communicating your insights to stakeholders. You can learn to code in various programming languages, such as R or Python, depending on whatever your preference is with the data analyst in R or Python tracks. 
I prefer Python, but that doesn't mean that R is bad. Whichever programming language you prefer, you'll work with real-world datasets and get hands-on with interactive exercises. Like I said before, learning by doing is the best way to learn, and trust me, you'll definitely get your hands dirty and solve some real-life data problems. So. If you're ready to take your data analysis skills to the next level and get an industry-recognized certificate, then make sure you check out the Data Analyst Certification by DataCamp using the link in the description below. And a huge shout out to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. Getting a certification from a reputable company is key, not because you'll land your job immediately after becoming certified, but because without a certificate or some credible proof that you can actually do data analysis tasks, why would companies believe that you can do what you say you can do? Without any proof, it would simply just be you saying that I'm great at data analysis or something like that, something that anyone can say. Now, a big misconception here is that many people think that getting certified equals getting a data analyst or some other sort of analyst job. And let me tell you the harsh reality. This is most likely not the case. Getting your job in data analytics has various other important elements that I will cover in the rest of this video in the form of tips three, four, and five. So here's tip number three. Put your data analysis hat on when writing your resume. Now, what do I mean by this? First and foremost, more is not always better when it comes to your resume. I'd say for every 10, 15 years of experience, have a page, which means most of you who are watching this video should have a one-pager resume. Please do not include non-relevant experiences and tasks, which obviously means that please do include only relevant experiences and tasks. You only have about five to 600 words on the single page, so make every word count. Make every sentence live and breathe data analysis and nothing else. And let me give you a practical example here. Let's say I currently work at a retail store and I have a customer facing role selling clothes and I would like to apply for data analyst jobs. I would not put on my resume that I can fold clothes quickly and efficiently because it has nothing to do with data analysis. I would, however, include and highlight on my resume any experiences I have within this role that involved data analysis. So I'd include tasks like using some kind of a spreadsheet let's say Excel, to extract, gather, and analyze inventory and sales data, to optimize inventory levels, and analyze sales patterns to identify the most or least profitable items. I hope you can see what I did here. I picked out the tasks from my role that directly had something to do with data analysis and included those tasks on my resume, and I excluded anything that had absolutely nothing to do with data analysis. I know this sounds like a no-brainer, but the amount of resumes I've read from people wanting to apply to data jobs that had so much non-relevant information is very, very high. So please put your data analysis hat on when writing your resume and include only relevant experiences and tasks, relevant in the sense that the experiences or tasks must have something to do with data analysis. Now, another thing you could do right now would be to utilize tip number four and build a unique portfolio that stands out from the crowd. I get asked this question a lot. What makes a data portfolio good? What makes a data portfolio stand out from the crowd? So let me summarize it quickly. A good data portfolio, in my opinion, is one that can be easily understood by anyone. And by anyone, I mean both technical and non-technical audiences. In my own Ultimate Data Portfolio, I have a front page summary of my projects where anyone can understand exactly what I did, why I did, and what insights, conclusions, or recommendations I found in less than a minute. It is so simple that you don't need to know anything about data analysis, yet you can still very easily understand everything. At the same time, it also contains all the super granular details for the really technical people in case they would like to know everything about my projects and maybe even recreate the same thing. And for those of you who would like to create the portfolio, 
just like mine, or even better, feel free to check out my ultimate data portfolio at mochan.info. It comes with all the templates you'll need to build your dream data portfolio quickly and efficiently. So, we know that a great data portfolio must be one that can be easily understood by any audience. It should also ideally cover the entire life cycle of the data analysis workflow or the entirety of your data analysis skill set. So, think of the data analysis stages, right? Ideally, you'd want to showcase your ability to gather data, clean data, transform and manipulate data, build some reports and dashboards, and communicate your insights and findings. Ideally, you'd showcase all of these data analysis stages, maybe even across multiple tools to highlight your proficiency in various data analysis tools like Excel, SQL, Tableau, Power BI, or even coding. And the final tip, I would like to share with you would be to apply to as many jobs as possible, because more than likely, volume negates luck. I've received so many messages and have had so many people come to me desperately, saying that it's impossible to get a data job. To which my usual quick question is, how many jobs have you applied to? To which the usual answer is two or three. Ask any person who has a job in the world of data analytics how many jobs they applied to, how many times they interviewed before finally landing their role. And believe me when I say the answer will not be two or three. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy to get a data job, but you're certainly making things a lot more complicated for yourself if you don't even get the right amount of applications in. So, please apply to as many jobs as possible, as volume certainly negates luck, especially over time if you apply consistently. I really hope you found these five tips that you can start implementing right now useful. And please, I'm asking you not to just watch this video and do nothing about it. Please try and implement at least one thing I mentioned today to drive your career forward. If you enjoyed watching this video, which I presume you did, given you're still watching, then you should join my community at mochan.info for exclusive data analysis content. And you should also check out these videos right here. Thanks so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this. And I shall see you in the next one.